Over the past three years, the Courtauld has been undergoing many changes, and I'm delighted that the Courtauld Gallery will be reopening to the general public in November 2021. Originally, uh, the building was uh, occupied by nine organisations. It looks like a singular palatial facade. Behind that was a set of almost Georgian houses. The nine organisations included some of the learned societies, as well as the hawkers and peddlers office. And these each had their own suites of rooms, their own entrances and their own staircases. So as much as it was a building to house nine organisations, it was also a building that was designed to divide nine organisations. And one of the key aspects of this project is how to take that structure and make it work for a single institution. The project's taken seven years, which uh, for a project of this scale is probably uh, quite quick. I think when you're working in historic rooms, the, one of the challenges is simply not knowing exactly what you're working with until you get the construction works underway. The rooms are never square, the cornices never align, the floors are all uh, at different sort of angles and levels. So a project like this involves the full range of construction practice and material thinking. Uh, there's restorative acts which require traditional craftsmen to restore things like the wood grain doors or the historic lath and plaster. Uh, and then there's a combination of that with a very contemporary construction. One of the aspects of the project which is really critical is how do you integrate all of the contemporary services and operational requirements for a really uh, high quality gallery without everybody seeing that work. So the main interventions really are probably at the, the bottom and the top of the building. At the bottom of the building, the new vaults uh, connect across uh, between the two staircases and that involved a sort of tunnelling operation uh, to support the building while that work was undertaken. And then that's kind of mirrored at the very top of the building with the creation of the two new uh, temporary galleries, which extend the galleries from, again, east to west, bridging over the vestibule, where we had to take out the original attic structures uh, and small compartment walls to open those spaces up and bring in natural light. During the works, we came across a number of things we hadn't anticipated and weren't uh, visible, all recorded. Uh, in the great room itself and the adjacent galleries, we found three levels of linings for different time periods. We uh, uncovered the first level, which was 20th century linings. Behind that were the linings that were added in the late 1980s when the Courtauld first moved in to Somerset House. And then beyond those were the original uh, chambers linings for the great room. So there was a really interesting post process of unpeeling We've had a fascinating range of discoveries during the work, but the most interesting was the discovery in the basements of a medieval, late medieval cesspit, which goes back to very early history of the building, uh, before, well before William Chambers built this 18th century building on the site. The project that will be delivered when we open in November will transform the building, making it much more light, much more open, much more accessible, much more visible. In many ways it will be very familiar to those who knew it before, but it will be as if an 18th century building has been transformed into something with 21st century facilities and details and ease of movement and accessibility. Uh, the work has improved the accessibility of the building in many ways uh, and it's been a really important part of the project because this building, which really consists of a series of, of vertical buildings which don't always line up, had over 42 different levels. Uh, it had 14 steps up before you could ever get to a lift. It had areas that you couldn't move across. And what we've done is to link the different parts of the building so that several levels you can traverse the whole building. We've introduced lifts, we've done very delicate interventions where there's been a slight change of level to allow it, people to move between them and done everything we can to ensure that people, whatever their physical uh, ability, they can move around. For me, having worked with the project for many years, there are many, many important parts, but I think the one that has to stand out uh, at this point as we're about to open the gallery is the restoration of the so-called great room 
at the top of the building, which was the original display room of the Royal Academy of Arts when the building was first developed. At the time, it was the largest public display area, uh, public display space in Europe. It was top lit, it had grandeur, it had drama, and it was at the centre for great assemblies of both of artists, of works by artists and by the public. The new LVMH Great Room is going to be, as it were, the conclusion, the height, the end, the summary of the visitor experience as they work their way up through the building into the grandeur of this great space. <laughs>